Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, I really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We're discussing something a little different today, something that I've noticed for quite some time and I've been kind of putting off this video to discuss for quite a while because I haven't really found the perfect context or situation that would bring up for me to discuss this. And recently I found that opportune moment. There was a recent article written on uh, digitallydownloaded.net. Uh, the author is, uh, well his name's Matt S, he's the editor-in-chief. Uh, I'll put his Twitter description in the bottom link. Also I'll put the uh, description of the link itself for the article. But it's a very interesting uh, story on the history, authenticity and social responsibility of wargaming and World of Tanks. Now, I'm not going to read off the entire spiel. It's a very good read. I would strongly encourage you to go read it yourself, but it brought a bit of a segue into something I wanted to discuss. Now, Richard Cutland, uh, otherwise known as the Challenger, is probably the most prominent and respected member of the armoured, uh, I guess, culture and armoured world, especially involving Wargame, of course, uh, because he is the head of military relations in Europe. And uh, he served with the Royal Tank Regiment for quite some time, I think about 25, 30 years. So he's tank through and through. Uh, so I have huge respect for him, and along with Nicholas Moran, who also works for Wargaming, the uh, American side of armor, even though he's Irish accented, a lot of people get very confused. Uh, he had worked on the Abrams, and obviously the Challenger with uh, main battle tanks of the United Kingdom. And this article brings up some really interesting points that I've wanted to kind of talk about a little bit today, and that is what is going on with the what I call tank phenomena in the youth and generation of today. And it's very interesting. It's not only interesting, but it's also quite awe-inspiring to know that about 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, um, when I was serving in the British Army, um, tanks and gaming of tanks was not really a huge thing. Uh, you know, World of Tanks has just recently gone through its 10th anniversary, so it's been around for about 10 years now. And it's safe to say the World of Tanks and other games like it, including War Thunder and such, have brought armoured fighting vehicles the history, the nostalgia, the passion, the understanding, the interest in them to the forefront for a, uh, quite a while now. And we've hit the level of interest and the level of participation in getting to know what tanks and armoured fighting vehicles, or planes as well, from history to today on an epic proportion, and something that I am baffled by every time I log into something like my Discord. The amount of information people know nowadays about armoured fighting vehicles is, is incredible. And of course you have people that know a lot about armoured fighting vehicles because they go to school to study about it or they've gone to you know many museums when they're older or they've just grown up liking armoured fighting vehicles. But what is the most interesting to me is those who have had zero interest in, in armoured fighting vehicles or, or military equipment in general play a couple of video games and are all of a sudden hooked. And I mean hooked on this basis of not just wanting to blow up other tanks in game and wanting to get high scores, etc. They're hooked in their interest in wanting to know more about how they work, how they operate, the history, the battles they were involved in. And that's why I really found this uh, article that I recently read here about, you know, the responsibility of knowing what these kind of games are about and what they're involved in. It's quite an interesting narrative. Um, you know, war games out there have a lot of criticism, right? We don't want to promote war. It's definitely not what games should be about. I think, for me, a huge part of playing video games is a stress reliever, and I'm sure many of you will agree that playing video games is a huge way of relieving stress and just to, you know, zone out and enjoy some time with some friends online or in person and blow stuff up. It, it doesn't have a deeper meaning for the most part, and that's maybe a bit of a different conversation we can have another day. But when it comes to things like World of Tanks and War Thunder, you're in tanks and blowing other tanks up, you start to understand about, you know, what was involved in the time period of when these vehicles were used and the kind of sacrifices people made and the understanding of, you know, these, these things aren't just, you know, a graphic on a screen. They involve people's lives that were at one point involved in these tanks. You know, when I'm playing something like War Thunder, and I'm driving around in my Sherman and blowing up other vehicles. Yeah, it's fun. It's cool. But in the back of my mind, and very prominently, may I add, you have to realize that people served in these vehicles. Many people died in sacrifice for freedom or for peace. Um, and unfortunately, it's a reality when you play these kind of games that you have to wake up to that. And that's what really astounds me, too, is that a lot of people that play these video games that I have come across in my community or other communities have the highest level of respect and interest in those sacrifices. I could probably go into my Discord right now and ask two or three questions involving armored fighting vehicles that involve some form of history or, or, or military, uh, I guess, specific situations that involve someone who they knew as a, either a vehicle commander or, or a general, and they could pinpoint and talk about it 
for, for hours. Not just, you know, a little tidbit of information. They would actually give you a full breakdown of history. Some of these people are 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And this is where I call it the tank phenomena. Because at my age, I was quite unique at the time in liking armored fighting vehicles. At, at a very young age, I was taken to museums. I was pushed forward into, you know, the realm of armored fighting vehicles, going to things like the Bovington Tank Museum. Many of these people that I speak to, they've never even heard of the Bovington Tank Museum yet. They're just playing on a video game and, and then going to school or going to a library and learning about these tanks and these vehicles, these battles, these generals, these heroes, these sacrifices, these situations. Or they're going online and, and researching things. And more and more, I see more events appearing online, like Tank Fest. And in Canada, we have our own, you know, military museum, the Ontario Regiment Museum. All these museums are starting to become hugely successful and hugely involved. Tank Fest. I mean, I never even heard of it until a few years ago. But all of a sudden, it's huge. I, I, talk, I talk to people who I would never expect to like tanks or to like armored fighting vehicles. And they're asking me if I'm going to Tank Fest. And I've always loved tanks and I didn't even know it was there. So, yes, video games do have that sense of, you know, I'm playing on a game that really is justifying in some regard, you know, tank on tank engagement. And, you know, at the end of the day, people did die in these vehicles. Yes, that is that is true. But at the end of the day, people are interested in it. They're not interested in it because they're blowing up the vehicles all the time. It's part of the gameplay, of sure, but... The fact that people are going out their way to learn more about armored fighting vehicles and want to attend museums and, and they have so much passion behind their discussion about a vehicle. There's some people who can list off every tank just about in the world, tell you exactly what weapon system it had on it, how it worked, the engine it had. And now, of course, there is some extremes to this. People like that, you know, are very, very intensive, right? They know a lot more than anyone else would because they are so passionately involved in it. But the normality of people just saying, you know, yeah, I played with some tanks today. Wonder what that is, how it works. That's huge. Um, when I look at footage of people, you know, like uh, Softline and, and other people that go to museums and events, and I'm just like, holy cow, that is what we need more of. We need more people who are not just logging into a server and blowing stuff up. We need people who want to appreciate history of armored fighting vehicles, understand how they work, the people that worked alongside them. Gaming is just one avenue for that, right? There's there's hundreds of other ways that you can get involved to learning about these things. A number of people that I know in my Discord, they study military history, they study military tactics and doctrine. Uh, they go into university for it. And uh, I asked them, did you ever play video games as a kid? Like, did you ever get involved in it? Oh no, I've never never been involved at all. My family was uh, was in the military and I could never get in the military, unfortunately, due to whatever specific reason. And I decided I would do something different, like study how militaries work, study how militaries can improve their tactics, study on, you know, the scientific capabilities of engineering, things like that, of how these weapons work and how we can be improved or, or how to prevent further situations like that. And again, that's part of a phenomenon because I don't think anyone... 10 years ago I knew, even in the military or outside the military, my friends, if I was to ask them, do you know anyone who's studying military history or military uh, tactics or strategy, they would say no, they wouldn't at all. And I, I feel like we're in a time or of a generation right now where there's so much positivity going into military history and, and military understanding that it's it's just, I don't know, it's, it's really inspiring. I, I, I see footage of, you know, Tank Fest, I'm seeing all these kids around and if they're teenagers or, or young kids and they're just absolutely fascinated by tanks, they know more about some of these tanks than I think a military historian of 25 years of experience would know because what drives them is not the understanding. It's the passion about what it is, what it did, how it works. Um, some people like to learn about these things just to show off. Yeah, I know about this. I know about that. I don't think they're quite the people I'm discussing. It, it's, it's people that you know actively go out of their way to make sure that they can pass on that information to other people and, and have them understand it. One of my big passions to you guys is, is talking about military equipment of the modern era. I, I'm really not super passionate about World War II, World War I equipment. It's not my area of, you know, understanding. I, I think there's a lot of information there. Uh, a little too much for me, you know. <laughs> I think it's daunting uh, understanding military equipment of World War II and World War I because there's so many different bits of pieces of kit and variants. 
Um, but the modern day, I feel, is something that's a little bit neglected. Uh, honestly, I do. I feel like, you know, we're starting to see in sort of the wargaming network and, and into the, you know, the video gaming network of tanks and things nowadays, we're starting to see more involvement in modern equipment. But there's also a lot of misinformation, even for myself. I make mistakes. I'm definitely not right 100% of the time. But there's a lot of misinformation out there too. And I think it's part of my responsibility to try my very best to pass on information that's accurate. I don't always hit the mark every time. Unfortunately, that is what it is. But it's important that if you are, say, a content creator or someone that is discussing these kinds of equipment and, and, and tactics and even games, you know, even when you're playing some of these games and people are talking about how they work and things like that, we have to be, you know, have some responsibility and the, the temptation to just, you know, make things up because it sounds cool or, or to create a scenario or a piece of equipment that's like, wow, this is really, really cool. Everybody's going to love watching this. You got to be careful with that because it, it causes some risk of compromising the, the I guess, uh, stability of military history and military understanding, right? I try my best to not go over the board sometimes when I'm talking about equipment with my own personal opinion. But the tank phenomena, I think, is is slowly increasing, increasing every single day. Whether it be you know people attending things like Tank Fest, like I said before, or just getting more involved with wargaming. How many times? And if you're a subscriber or follower of me, I'm sure you've seen it probably a hundred times. How many times do you think in the last, let's say, three or four months, that you've seen either a World of Tanks commercial, War Thunder commercial, or something else military related in terms of armored fighting vehicles or planes or tanks and stuff coming up in your YouTube feed? or your Twitter feed, or your Facebook feed, I guarantee you, you've had at least a couple. I guarantee it. Because they're realizing that more and more people are falling into the passion and interest of armored fighting vehicles. Because I don't play games like War Thunder because I want to blow up other tanks. I play it, for the most part, so I can understand more about them. Right? I know it's not the most accurate game in the world. Same for World of Tanks, right? There's a lot of... There's a lot of information there, there's a lot of data, there's a lot of things that we can spend time hacking and drilling into the data and finding out if it's true or not. But if I'm driving a Sherman along and I'm trying to shoot at a Panther, you know, with a short stubby, I know I'm not going to hit it from the front. That's something as, as if you've never known what armored fighting vehicles were, you wouldn't understand that. You wouldn't know the penetration values, you wouldn't understand slanted armor. You know, you wouldn't understand space armor for more modern day, modern day fighting vehicles in the game. The game slowly starts to give you little tidbits of information that just pique your interest more. Ooh, that was cool. Well, next time I'll do it this way. I wonder why I had to do it that way. Then you go into the research, and the great thing about these games is they've created that responsibility. They've taken ownership and said, we are going to provide information about these vehicles, not just create vehicles for you to blow up. We're going to give you descriptives. We're going to give you narratives that talk about these vehicles. And the great thing about wargaming, for sure, is some of their YouTube videos are just outstanding. You know, the Challenger and, and Nicholas Moran going through these vehicles and literally piece by piece walking through how they worked on the vehicles themselves. I mean, I don't have the luxury of that, unfortunately, here in Canada, especially here in, you know, lowly or western Alberta. I try my best, but we're very limited in what we can and cannot, you know, review from in person but you know if you've got the resources just like you know wargaming does it's it's awesome i think it's really really cool and i think the educational value of video games today and the depiction of history of those you know conflicts and and, and sacrifices made by armored fighting vehicles or military equipment in general is growing more and more every day and i hope it does i hope that we you know as a culture of you know armored fighting vehicle enthusiasts and, and those who enjoy learning about military equipment and those who play the video games that involve them understand that you know we definitely have a huge open door here to bring more and more people into this community talk about military vehicles respect them understand that people did lose their lives in them understand that their conflicts still going on around the world involved with some of these vehicles and appreciate and respect them uh, because they are you know at the end of the day pieces of military hardware but those that operate them and serve in them every day uh, are the ones that you know we need to think about in the back of our minds when we play these kind of video games anyway folks hope you enjoyed today's uh, discussion uh, i would love to hear your input on this i will be doing a live stream on this in the near future because i think it's really important um if you do want to be notified of any upcoming videos please click the little bell by the subscribe button also, if you want to support my Patreon account, please feel free to go check out the description box below and also other social media links in there too. I hope to see you next time, everyone. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.